Hey folks, one of the greatest things about homeschooling is the lessons that we teach are life integrated. They will serve our children not just for a year or two, but for the rest of their lives and vicariously, we're also teaching our grandchildren. Now I take this time out uh, each week, every other week sometimes, to share lessons that some people, some parents might not think of. Uh, these are lessons that are still very, very important. And this is really why we homeschool, why we disciple our kids, is to teach them biblical traits, biblical values. Last week, we talked about one such value. That is what it means to be in authority. Authority is a place of responsibility, not privilege, as we found out with the uh, king's eunuch with Esther last week. This week, let's go back to uh, Esther 2.15 and talk about the flip side of that, which is submission. When it came time for Esther to go back to the king, she took nothing with her except what the king's eunuch had, who had charge of the women advised, and she was winning favor in the eyes of all who saw her. Esther knew there was power in submission. Now, most folks don't put those two words together. They think power is being under something or someone, a place of weakness, of, insub of subordination. But biblical submission is a place of power. How so? Esther was submissive on several levels. First of all, she had Mordecai, her uncle. He, to me, is an archetype of the Holy Spirit. He kind of was over the whole spiritual arena of what was going on here. And she submitted to him kind of as unto the Lord. So as homeschooling parents, we are called to submit ultimately to God. But also she submitted to the eunuch, who was uh, a little more on an intimate level. And she knew that the eunuch had spent time with the king. He knew what the king liked, and so she submitted herself to him as well. And of course, ultimately, she was married to King Ahasuerus, and she submitted to him as a husband and as her civil authority. But here's the key point. While Esther was under people, she was ultimately under God. Submission is a wonderful manifestation of faith in God. It understands that God is sovereign. He puts us where He wants us to be and people in relationship to us. So when we submit to man, or in the case of woman, we are submitting to God. And because she understood that, it brought deliverance to all the Jews who were in the Medo-Persian Empire. She did more than many, many great men could do, even though they might have had more position than her. There's power in submission. Secondly, we have to understand and teach our kids, everybody's in submission. I don't care who you are. If you're the president, we have the legislative branch and the executive branch. Uh, if you're a pastor, you have elders and deacons. Uh, if you are in the home, if you are a husband, you have ultimately, there's a mutual submission with our wives, but ultimately we have God there to judge over us as well. Children, you are in submission to your parents. And these are not bad things. These are good things if we learn them. And so today, parents, as you're teaching your kids math and English and social studies, if you can teach them the power of submission, to embrace the submission that God has given them, whether it's in the civic realm or maybe in the employment realm, church realm, you will save them so much heartache because some people are always kicking against the authority. There's always a seed of rebellion and they never find contentment and true power with God. Remember, there is power in submission. This is Kirk Smith with ICHE's Take 5.